able to go. Or maybe your mom has promised to bake you um, chocolate chip cookies or your favorite dessert, and then she gets sick and she's unable to do it. A lot of times our promises are made by people who intend to keep them, but people are human and they can't always keep the promises that they make. But God makes promises to his people and God will keep every promise that he makes to you. There's a scripture that's my favorite scripture and it's Philippians 4 and 13. And it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now in that verse, it says I can do all things, but it doesn't just stop there. And we like to quote that scripture a lot, but we want to stop right there. We say I can do all things, but the verse says through Christ who strengthens me. Now, how are you going to apply this verse to your life? Those of you that are in school, you have a very difficult test that you have to take. When you're sitting there getting ready to write down your answers, you can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But now let me tell you one thing. That doesn't mean that you don't have to study. Okay, God expects you to do your part. And when you do your part, he will do his part. Children, you have a tough road ahead of you. The sermons that I'm going to give you for the next couple of Sundays are to help you make choices for your lives. You're not too young to make choices in your lives. And some of the choices that you make even now are going to affect the rest of your life. So don't just do what everybody else is doing. Don't just follow the crowd and go along just so you won't be different. Sometimes we have to take a stand and do the thing that's right, even if we're standing all by ourselves. Before we depart from this place, I want you to bow your heads and pray along with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you for the precious jewels that you have put in our lives. Father, we don't know the things that they will encounter this week. But our hearts are grieved because there are so many things that they will come in contact with that will harm them. Father, give them right decisions. Give them right choices. Help them to take the stands that they need to take. We just lift them up to you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And have a good week. Sister Shelton for that lesson at Children's Amen. Church, for the message and the promises of God. We're going to prepare our hearts and minds now for our benevolent offering. This ministry of kindness is to help those who are in need, the poor, the sick, the troubled, and the bereaved. As you give generously, know that God is already giving it back to you over and over again. Just as he blessed you, he's using you to bless somebody else. Your offering will also further Martin Temple's mission in the community for outreach and community development. So please give liberally in this offering. As the ushers now come, let us give in this our benevolent offering. Amen. To you in the name of Jesus, acknowledging you as our Father and our God and Jesus as your Son and our Lord, we present these gifts, Father God, back to you. And ask that you multiply it, Father God, for the furthering of your kingdom. Bless those that gave, Father God. Bless those that had a desire to give but just weren't able. Continue to strengthen them, Lord, in your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us pray. Oh Lord, we're so glad we tried you. We heard the psalmist say, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And we know you to be a good God all the time. We thank you, Lord, for how you blessed us, how you kept us, how you never let us fall. And now, Lord, we come before you to present ourselves once again. Look on our hearts, Lord, and if there's anything that shouldn't be there, remove it right now in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, replace it with the power of your precious Holy Ghost. Let it run over, Lord. Let it be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Lord, we want a goodly measure upon us and in our lives. Lord, we need to hear from you. Speak now through your chosen vessel. Make me an instrument of your Holy Spirit for the redemption of lost souls. Hide me behind the cross, that thy waiting congregation would not see me, but instead see and try Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of mine heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength, my rock, and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Turn with me, if you will, in the Old Testament to the book of the prophet Nehemiah. The Old Testament lesson found in chapter 4. We'll read the first six verses. Nehemiah 4, 1 through 6. Amen. The New King James Version reads like this. But it so happened when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish, stones that are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him, and he said, Whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Hear, O oh our God, for we are despised. Turn their repro reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height for the people had a mind to work. For the people had a mind to work. I want to talk to you briefly this morning from the subject, a made-up mind. A made-up mind. History is replete with examples from antiquity to the present of people who made up their minds to do the will of God who called them at such a time as this. There were people who decided in the midst of hard times that they would do their best to achieve their best and be all that they could be according to God's calling upon their lives. Or there was a young woman named Isabella Bumfrey who decided years ago that she was going to serve God by being a leader of her people, fighting for rights for African Americans and for women alike. Isabella decided long ago that she would stand before the forces of evil and say, ain't I a woman? <laughs> and she made up her mind and changed her name to Sojourner Truth. Then there was a young man who moved up from slavery, Frederick Augustus Bailey, who had seen the oppression of seeing his own family murdered and killed and crucified for just being who they are. And he decided to make up in his mind because he knew God for himself and decided because of his relationship with God that he was created in the image of God and had dignity and respect as a member of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. He made up his mind to follow God and changed his name to Frederick Douglass. He made up 
his mind. A, a young man in apartheid South Africa, a young lawyer, Nelson, decided that he was going to fight for what was right in the midst of oppression, heat of oppression, and the crucible of modern day slavery, decided that he was going to fight for what was right. And for his people, he would lead the fight no matter how great the cost was, even though he was sent to prison on Robbins Island to stay there for 27 years. He then became president of South Africa. Nelson Mandela made up his mind. A young man from Oklahoma who was a Baptist preacher's son, Tulsa to be exact, had lived a life of crime and shame, came up through the streets, moved to New York and Boston and was a hustler, but he had an experience in a jail cell and made up his mind and changed his name to Malcolm X. Another young man around his time, a contemporary of his who grew up in Atlanta, was given the name Michael Luther, but later on in his life, he made up his mind that he was going to serve God and follow in the footsteps of his daddy and changed his name to Martin Luther King. He made up his mind, instead of changing his mind, he made up his mind to follow God. And when you have a made up mind, there's nothing that can stop you. When you make up in your mind that you're going to serve God and do for God, no one can turn you away. And that is the mind that Nehemiah had. Yes. Nehemiah had a very comfortable position as a cupbearer for the king. He had prestige and prominence. He was in the inner courts and he was hobnobbing with the best. He, he had a reputation and everyone respected him because he was a part of the cabinet of the king. But he got a vision from God and decided that he couldn't stay where he was. Someone told him of the ruins of the great city of Jerusalem, how the walls had been torn down and the people's spirits had been broken and their vision had been clouded and their, their goals had been obliterated. They decided that they had to find somebody who would stand for them and stand for God. So the word came to Nehemiah, a cupbearer, who just couldn't hold on to it and had to go tell the king, I must go to Jerusalem. I, I must go to the holy city to see what has happened to the city and see if God can use me to rebuild the walls. So Nehemiah, against much opposition, but still with the blessing of the king, went on to Jerusalem and he surveyed the land. And he looked around at all that was around him, and he remembered the stories of old of how great Jerusalem was. Right. He, he remembered how the city was carved out and constructed in a glamorous display of glory to God. He remembered the old temples that stood tall, shining toward heaven, so that God could just shine his glory upon the people. He, he remembered how the folks day and night would go into the temple and bow before God and honor the Lord who brought them out of darkness into his marvelous light. The one who brought them from slavery and brought them to freedom land. A man who brought them out of oppression to a promised land. He remembered how great Jerusalem was, but when he looked up, he saw that Jerusalem was no longer the same. He saw that the walls had been torn down, that they had been beaten militarily and spiritually by the adversaries that were against them, and his heart was heavy. The word says that Nehemiah fasted and prayed. He mourned and he wept before God, and he said, God, please forgive us for our sins. We know that we haven't done what you've asked us to do. We know that we were a people of God, but now we have given up on our promises to you. We have fallen from the teachings of Moses, and we have strayed from our shepherd who led us through the valley of the shadow of death. And he prayed before God, and God heard his prayer. And God placed upon the heart and mind of Nehemiah a vision to go and rebuild the walls. And so with the blessing of the king and with the gathering of just a few folk, Nehemiah went on his way to rebuild the walls. He saw ruin and deterioration and dearth and destruction, but God gave him a new vision. And when he looked at the walls, he no longer saw them the same, but instead he saw a vision of a new city. Maybe he saw what John saw on the Isle of Patmos when he said, I saw a new city. 
a new heaven and a new earth. And you know when the Holy Spirit gets upon you, you can see some things that you can't see with your natural eyes. When God speaks to you, you can speak things into existence that do not currently exist. And so Nehemiah, with the power of God, armed with the Holy Spirit and with a new sight and renewed strength, went forward to build the walls, and Nehemiah gathered together just a few folk who would believe in God and trust God and accept the vision that God had given to his master builder. Now, Nehemiah was not the great craftsman of old. He had not even been trained in all of the trades of building up walls and building up new cities. But God had given him a vision and had empowered him to be a leader. And so Nehemiah, in wisdom, decided to pull together some folk who could help him. He found some people who had gifts and talents in the congregation and pulled them together to rebuild the walls. Nehemiah knew that he couldn't do it by himself. If he tried to build that wall, he would have killed himself before the wall was completed. But he found some people who God showed him had gifts and talents and brought them into the fold and then prayed for them. And God blessed them as they began to rebuild the walls. Now, Nehemiah's vision was a personal vision that became a public vision. It was a private vision that now was owned by the collective consciousness of the people. The people saw in Nehemiah God working in, in his life. You see, you may look at Nehemiah as just a cupbearer. See, some folk would have just looked at him as a servant of the king. They said, he, he's nobody, he has no skills, but God put the Holy Spirit upon the people so that the people could look at Nehemiah in a new light. And they could see that God was working in Nehemiah's life, and Nehemiah was no longer the same. You know that song that we sing, I'm not the same. Yeah. Everything has changed since Jesus has come in to my life. You see, when God comes into your heart and takes control of your life, you're able to do what you never thought you were able to do. And so the people looked at Nehemiah in a new light and saw him as the leader of the people, a master builder in mind and heart who was able to pull forces of people together. But Nehemiah also knew that he would not rebuild the walls without opposition. Whenever you try to do God's work, you better believe you're going to have some opposition. I don't care who you are. I don't care how many degrees you have. I, I don't care how much intelligence you have. I don't care how much business acumen you have. I don't care how much financial prosperity you have. Whenever you decide to do God's work, you're going to meet with some opposition. So Nehemiah, knowing that the opposition was coming, did not fight with swords and artillery. But instead, he used the weapon that God gave him. Nehemiah got down on his knees and prayed. Nehemiah called upon the name of the Lord. Look at when the people came against Nehemiah and mocked them for what they were trying to do. Folks said, who do these people think they are? Who, who are these Jews? What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Who do they think they are? Will they offer sacrifices? We've taken the church from them. They didn't know that the church was in the people. Will they complete it in the day? Will they revive the stones? And even Tobiah said, huh, look at what they're trying to build. If a fox gets on it, it will fall. And you know what Nehemiah did? He didn't try to fight them. He didn't try to go toe to toe with them. He didn't try to debate them. But look at what he did. He began to pray. Hear, O oh our God. For we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. You know, there's some folk you don't even need to worry yourselves about. You just go to God in prayer. Let the Lord fight your battles and the victory will be yours. And so Nehemiah began to pray and the people began to come together. And right after he got done praying, it says, so we built the wall until the entire half thereof. Why? Because the people had a mind to work. 
Good God Almighty. When the people have a mind to work, no opposition, no obstacles, nothing can stop you from doing God's work. When the people have a mind to work, there's nothing that they will not accomplish with God's help. Although you may come against opposition as Nehemiah did, every, they tried everything to stop Nehemiah. They even came up with some lies on Nehemiah. They told all kinds of stories on him. You know how folk can do when they don't like you, when they don't think that you're able to fill their slot, when they're afraid that you're going to get more recognition than them, when they're afraid that their position may fall a little lower, they'll make up stuff on you. They'll try to take what God has for you, but I heard someone say what God has for me. It is for me. And so they were up against the opposition of rumors and lies and gossip and distractions and destruction and defamation of character and assassination of morality and persecution and dissuasion and co-option. Some folk even would try to be paid off. The opposition came and decided to slip a few hundreds in somebody's pocket to get them to join them and fight against Nehemiah. But if God be for you, who can be against you? And so the people decided, instead of filling in the, with the complicity of the adversaries, decided to cooperate and collaborate, for they had a mind to work. When you have a mind to work, there's nothing that you cannot do. I, I want to leave with you just three points about having a mind, a made-up mind, to work for God. When you have a made-up mind, first of all, you have a way to conceive. Because people without God are spiritually barren. They're barren in heart and barren in mind. You see, Nehemiah, without the presence of the Holy Spirit, would have been empty in his pursuits. Because he would have been the only person that had a drive, and he would not have been able to empower the people to see the vision and believe in the vision. But God gave him a way to conceive. A way. You know, God does that for us. He has a spiritual way of giving us a way to conceive. You know, you know conception is, is, is double in meaning. Conception is the ability to give birth, to, to conceive, that the right conditions are there for conception to take place. It, it, it's the only way that a little virgin girl named Mary could have a baby in Bethlehem because God made a way for her to conceive. Yes. Folk thought she was crazy talking about she never knew a man. Well, well. That she only loved Joseph, but she was now going to give birth to God's son. You know, when God places his seed in you, he gives a way for you to conceive. When you thought that your life was empty and barren, God has a way of planting a seed of hope in you that gives birth to a new vision, that you can have new dreams and new aspirations and new hopes. When God plants his seed on you, that's when the Holy Spirit overcomes you. That, that, that's what happened to Mary. Mary didn't have to try any other method. The word says that the Holy Spirit just came upon her and enveloped her and she conceived. But every now and then, God gives us a way to conceive. That there are things that God has shown us that if it were not for the Holy Spirit, we would never see. I, I don't have to go back too far. Let's go back to 71st in Indiana. That in the midst of opposition, I did read a little history, and all the opposition that Martin Temple went up against, from within and without, people who tried to stop you, God had made a way to conceive. A seed was planted in then Pastor Nathaniel Jarrett, and the vision was shared with the people of God, and the conditions were right for the baby to come forth, and the baby to be shared by the congregation, to say, now is given unto us in Chicago. A new vision of a new ministry in a new location for the God that we serve. The people were able to say, God is doing a new thing. And so God gave the conception years ago, but brought it to fruition here at 69th and Cottage Hill. And, and it wasn't without obstacles and without opposition, but when God makes a way, he's a way out of no way. When God makes a way, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. When God makes a way, no one can block it. No one can put up roadblocks. No one can stop the progress of God. A way to conceive is to see in a new way. That God gives us a vision to see things that we never thought we'd be able to see before. And it doesn't stop there. The, the baby is not aborted with the birth, but instead the baby grows to maturation. 
and then new conceptions are given to the baby so that the baby can see what it never was able to see before. You, you, you do know that when a baby is born, it's not really able to see, that all objects in front of it are cloudy and it's not able to see beyond what is right in front of it. But after time, when the baby matures, <laughs> when, when it gets the right nutrients, when it's taught, when it's given the right food, uh, when it hears the word of God, uh, when it's loved and cuddled and nurtured in the right way, it will develop so that all of that which it was supposed to be begins to come to life. Uh, even when it's just a little, little fetus, God has put a plan upon that baby that upon the right conditions and the right growth and the right development, when the baby reaches maturity, Maturity, it will be able to be all that God intended for it to be. Oh, there are things that we haven't seen yet, Mark Tiffin, that God is about to show us. He's going to give us new eyes so that we can see. And when you have a made-up mind, I'm so glad that some folk made up their minds that they were going to work for the building of the walls. I'm so glad that some folk made up in their minds, in their hearts, that they were going to work in spite of the opposition because God had given them a way to conceive. But secondly, what I saw in this text, they have a made up mind, you have to have a will to believe. You see, there were people who decided to follow Nehemiah. They, they saw the vision, but they knew the vision would not come to fruition until they did some work. And before you can do work, you've got to make up your mind that you're going to work. Yeah. You know, there's some folk that have already given up because they don't want to work. They, they, they just don't want to work. They, they, they've given up. They, they said it, it, it's too much for us. The problem is too big for us. The task is too great for us. We've given up. They, you know, you can't go to work until you get up in the morning. You, you've got a will to believe that you can do it. And so the people gathered around Nehemiah against all the opposition and said that we're going to work because we believe in the mission. You see, there are people now who are doubting the mission because it wasn't totally revealed to them. That's not what faith is all about. Don't you know that God gives the vision to the leader first? I know y'all aren't going to pray with me, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. That there are some things that you will not see, but that's what faith is. Uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You know, my brothers and sisters, if you were able to see everything God was going to do, you wouldn't follow him. If you saw the things that God was getting ready to take you through, you'd stop right now. If you knew what God was going to bless you with, you'd wave your white flag and say, no, I can't handle it yet because it's too great for me. I, I'm not ready for this kind of blessing. But God gives a vision to a leader to lead the people, and you got to follow the leader. Isn't that a game we played as a child? We didn't know what the leader was going to do, but because we believed in the game and because we trusted each other, we followed the leader because we knew one day we were going to be the leader. Hallelujah. You know God has a plan for you to be a leader? That God wants to call you from where you are? He wants you to get up from that pew and stop sitting there satisfied with where you are? That God wants you to come up a little bit higher? That God wants to use you? He wants you to be a leader as you follow the leader and as the leader follows Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No, no turning back. When you have the will to believe, you believe that God is making a way uh, even in the midst of nothingness. It, 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 isn't that what creation was all about? That, that God created something out of nothing. God, God specializes in that. He, he looked at what he was going to make before anyone else saw it. God was able to see and just speak things into existence. And don't you know that God, because he's the creator, is still creating things right now? that all he wants you to do is believe, that sometimes God doesn't want you to do anything, doesn't want you to say anything, doesn't want you to go anywhere, just believe. Just believe in your heart and it will come to pass. You've got to have a will to believe. But then thirdly, I'm on my way to my seat now. I just want to tell you that you've got to have a way to conceive and you've got to have a will to believe. But thirdly, you've got to have a work to achieve. You see, the vision was greater than Nehemiah. And what drove the people was their faith in God, but God enabled them to work. Faith without works is dead. 
You can say, I love the Lord all you want. You can say, oh, God is good all the time. But if you don't act on your belief, then your faith is dead. It doesn't say the person is dead, but it says your faith is dead. Oh, it's a, it, it's a sad place to be in when your faith is dead. I, I, I'm so glad that, that our ancestors decided to hold on to the faith. When James Weldon Johnson said that there was a time when faith unborn had died, but we decided in the midst of faithless situations, in the midst of hopeless and helpless situations, that they saw a bright side somewhere. They said that we're going to work until we find it. You've got to work to achieve. You see, Nehemiah, when he was on the wall, had folks that were trying to get him to come down from the wall. Don't you know that when you're working for God, there are folk that are going to try to get you to come down. They're going to tempt you with things. They're going to try you with things. They're going to test you with things to see if you're going to come down. That's what Satan did to Jesus in the wilderness when he brought him up to the mountain to show him what he didn't own in the first place, but said, if you bow down to me and jump down from this mountain, I'll give you everything that you see. But Jesus knew who his God was. And Jesus said, I can't come down. And furthermore, it's not yours to give anyhow. It's all mine. And my father who sent me and called me for such a time as this. You see, Jesus knew that his mission wasn't done yet. It was just the beginning of his ministry. It was just the beginning of the time when he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. To preach salvation salvation and liberty to those who are captive uh, to give sight to the blind uh, and walking to the lame uh, Jesus said I still got some work to do uh, I can't come down uh, and Nehemiah when he was on the wall uh, sent a message back uh, you know they tried to distract Nehemiah with all kinds of plans and schemes uh, they sent a message to him uh, that had lies and rumors and gossip in it uh, and Nehemiah said here take this back uh, send them a message that says I'm doing a great work and I can't come down. Good God Almighty. I'm glad that Nehemiah stayed on the wall because he became an example for those who are working for him. Now I want to show you something else in this text and I'm almost through. You see while Nehemiah was on the wall and he was telling folk what to do and while they were working diligently on the wall the word says that not everybody was on on the wall because there were some folk that had other jobs to do. Good God Almighty, don't you know in the church that not everybody has to be a trustee. Not everybody has to be a steward. Not everybody has to sing in the choir. Not everybody has to be a missionary. Not everybody has to be in the lay council. Not everybody has to work on the Christian Education Board. But there is a place for some folk to just pray. That while Nehemiah was on the wall, uh, it said that some folks stayed behind uh, and did some work uh, of another kind. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that God raises up some prayer warriors. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that Grandmama prayed for me. Uh, I'm so glad she prayed. Uh, I'm so glad she prayed. Uh, I'm so glad she prayed uh, for me. Uh, she was working uh, on the prayer line. She was calling him up on the main line. Don't you know in the church, we need some folk who are going to work. Get off of the telephone and stop gossiping. Get on the phone and call someone up to pray. If you're going to call them, say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Call them up and say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Call them up and say, The Lord is my shepherd uh, I shall not want uh, yes uh, some folk need to stay behind uh, and just work and pray uh, to be a defense against the enemy uh, because I want you to know uh, whether you know it or not uh, the adversary is 
is coming. Uh, he's seeking whom he can devour. He's seeking to tear down the wall. Uh, he's trying to come in at the foundation. Uh, he's trying to come in on the side. Uh, he's trying to creep in the back door. Uh, but if folk are stationed uh, around the wall, uh, the devil can't get in. Uh, I woke up this morning uh, with my mind uh, stayed uh, on Jesus. Uh, the devil can't touch you uh, when your mind uh, is stayed uh, on Jesus. Uh, I'm walking and talking uh, with my mind uh, stayed uh, on Jesus. Uh, I'm so glad uh, I got a made up mind uh, with a made up mind uh, with a made up mind. Uh, I'm willing to go uh, all the way through. Uh, if it costs my life, uh, I'm willing to pay the price. Uh, I've got heaven uh, in my view. Uh, if it means uh, I have to walk alone, uh, although my friends uh, get few, uh, I'm not going to worry about uh, what others may say or do. Uh, I've got heaven. Uh, I've got heaven. Uh, I've got heaven uh, in my view. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes, 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 the walls will not fall if you stay on the wall and just pray a little while. Yes, just have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by when you feel a little prayer will turn it and you know a little fire is burning huh? you know just a little talk just a little talk just a little talk with Jesus makes it all right oh yes I got a made-up mind I'm gonna serve him all the way I can't stop now I've come too far I can't turn around I made up my mind that I'm gonna follow Jesus all the way. I've got a way to conceive, I've got a will to believe, but I've got a work to achieve. And with God's help, I can do it. I can make it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So don't you come down off of that wall. Even when folk try to get you to come down, you stay there. When they call you with mess, tell them I'm on the wall, leave me alone. When, I, when they try to take some bricks out of the wall, tell them you better put that brick back. You didn't build it. You didn't make it. And you sure can't take it. It belongs to God. I'm so glad that this is God's church. Because if it was our church, it had been gone a long time ago. But thank God that he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of Hades. You do know where Hades is. Hallelujah, shall not prevail against it. I got a made up mind that I'm gonna serve God with all my heart, with all my mind, and with all my soul. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him because he first loved me. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Will you stand on your feet all over the church? I want to extend an invitation to you because this message was for you, whether you realize it or not. That there's work that God wants you to do. He's calling you now to a higher plane. But in order for that to happen, in order for him to use you, you've got to see it. You've got to conceive it. You, you've got to see the vision of a new life in Christ Jesus. And if there's something that keep it, that's keeping you from seeing it, ask God to remove it right now. Ask him to take those things out of you so that he can place something new in you. If you're in the church but not working in the church, you're not in God and God in you, this is your opportunity to come forward. Give your hand to the preacher but give your heart to God. The doors of the church are now wide open. If you don't have a church home in this city, God has you here for a reason. God has you here for a reason. And God was speaking to you to come out from where you are so that he can use you 
in a new way. Thank you, Jesus. The doors of the church are now open. The invitation to Christian discipleship is now extended to you. Will you come? All the way through. Will you go all the way through? Thank you, Lord. If it costs my life. Just pray in your heart as you listen to the words of this song. Don't look at anybody else but yourself. Don't wait for someone to get up around you. If you need to get up and come, come now. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. If it means Tomorrow's not promised to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To go God bless you. Alone. God bless you. Hallelujah. And if it means that someone else needs to come, might be you. Someone else. I'm not gonna worry about someone else needs to come. What other people say or what other people may do. Thank you, Jesus. Because I I got heaven got in my heaven view. In my view. Thank you, Jesus. Someone needs to come. Oh, if I may. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I've got a maid on my Hallelujah. And I'm willing to go all the way, the way through. Someone else needs to come. If it costs my life. Listen to God speak to you. I'm willing to pay. Don't hang up the line. If he's calling you, pick it up and answer. God heaven. Step out on faith. If it means that I Thank you, Jesus. have to walk Thank you, Lord. alone. Mm. And if it means that my friend If you're saved, pray for someone who's unsaved. You. Pray that God would speak to them. I'm worry about what other people say or do. praise and thank God that one has come back home. Sister Hazel Davis made up her mind. She made up her mind. She's already given her life to Christ before and now she de desires to reunite with the household of faith. We're glad that God gives us another chance. He's not just a God of a second chance but a whole lot of chances. And no matter where we've been and what we've done, he stands with open arms to receive us back home. We thank God for having a father like that. And Sister Davis, we welcome you back, back home to Martin Temple. We wanna reunite with you, and Reverend Perry, who's our Minister of Membership, will be in touch with you about membership classes so that you can restore your knowledge and your faith as a faithful member of Martin Temple AME Zion Church. May God continue to bless you and heaven smile upon you. Welcome back home, amen. At this time, I wanna make a special appeal for prayer. We believe in the power of prayer at Martin Temple. And we have some prayer partners who have united in classes. And I wanna invite you, I'm gonna put this plug in now to come with us on Monday nights. There's no ulterior motive, there's no other agenda but to pray. That the pastor is asking for partners in prayer and we're gonna to study together and pray together. And I believe like Nehemiah, that's the greatest weapon we have. I, I don't believe in 
fighting in the church and using politics in the church. It, it has no place and it has no power. But prayer is the answer. Anything that's going to be done is going to be done through prayer. Someone said, when we work, we work. But when we pray, God works. And so we believe in the power of prayer. So during this Lenten season, if you haven't found a prayer partner yet, find them and bring them with you to the altar. Right now, the, pray the altar is open for prayer. Find your prayer partner and come, come together at the altar. Hallelujah. And we invite all who want to unite with us. You can become our prayer partners right now. Just come to the altar. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, I can feel the power already. I can feel the power of God already in this place. Thank you. Wherever to touch and agree and ask anything in his name, it shall, it shall, it shall be done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, here we are before you just as we are. And by ourselves, Lord, we have no power. But when we unite together and touch and agree, we have all power. We know, Lord, that we can have and we can do anything through Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, we ask now, just as you've got us around this altar, united in hands and hearts, that you will put our spirits on one accord, that we will be in agreement for the will of God for this church and for our lives. Oh Lord, we thank you for giving us a made up mind. And we decided right here and now that we were gonna serve notice on Satan, to tell him he has no power over us, that he has no place in our church and in our lives. And we cast him out in the name of Jesus and we claim the victory in this place. Oh Lord, we cast out sickness, we cast out all manner of evil and disease because we have the power of prayer and we believe right now, Lord, that it's being worked out. Thank you, Lord, for touching us right where we are. Thank you, Lord, for anointing our heads with oil and let our cups running over. Thank you, Lord, for setting us down at the table and preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Thank you, Lord, for you are our light and our salvation. We have nothing and no one to fear. Lord, we come praying not only for ourselves, but we're praying for others. And we believe in intercessory prayer, Lord. And whatever the people of God ask in your name, if it's in your will, it will be granted. So we believe in faith that the people who have asked us to pray for them are being blessed right now. And Lord, we're even praying for people that don't know how to pray for themselves. We pray, Lord, that you will plant a seed in them and give them a way to conceive because a new birth happens at conception. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. So Lord, we're praying for salvation. We're praying for a new birth. We're praying for conception in the life of a sinner who doesn't know you. Oh Lord, we're praying for salvation. We're praying earnestly and diligently for salvation to come to our church and to our houses. Lord, we believe it and we receive it. Now Lord, touch every person hallelujah at this altar lift from them lord the things that they carried with them to this altar for you told us in your word cast all our burdens upon the lord and so lord we're feeling a little bit lighter now we're feeling the load being lifted from us we were worried about our relationships but now lord the load is being lifted hallelujah we were worried about our children but now lord the load is being lifted we were worried about loved ones that didn't want to do right, who were falling away. But Lord, we believe now that the load is being lifted from us. We were even worried about ourselves, how we were going to make it. We're worried about our finances. We're worried about our jobs. We're worried about our spouses. We're worried about our habits that we can't break. But Lord, we turn them over to you right now in the name of Jesus. Cast them out and deliver us by the power of your spirit. Oh Lord, we have nothing to fear because you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Our mind is made up right now that we're going to live for you. And that we're going to live victoriously and abundantly in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the victory. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the victory. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the victory. 
and we receive it right now. We're, we're not going to hold these things anymore. We give them up, Lord, and we receive the blessings that you have for us right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we ask it and we claim it. Amen. 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 You may return to your seats with a made-up mind. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us have a little talk and we'll Oh yes, he will answer. Give a little prayer, we'll turn it. Oh yes, a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Come on, let's sing that tonight. Let us. Don't you want to talk to him? Tell him all about him. And he will. Oh, thank you. He will answer. Oh, in you. And you know a little fire. Have a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. One more time. Now let us have a little talk and we'll and he'll answer. We thank God for lending us his spirit in this worship service. We praise God for all that he has done and what he's getting ready to do because we've got a made up mind. And it also says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. If you have the mind of Christ, then you will see and know and understand the perfect will of God. That is what we seek after, that we may find him. That is what we meditate upon day and night, that we may not sin against God. Wherever you go this week, don't forget to bring God with you. He's the only one that can keep you from falling. And if today you did not make up your mind, when you leave this place, you pray about it in your secret closet, because tomorrow's not promised to you. God had you here for a reason. Don't let this opportunity waste away. Maybe because of fear or doubt, you didn't step forward but I want you to know that you can still have salvation. And if you don't know how to do it by yourself, let me tell you what to do. Turn to Romans 10 and read the whole chapter, but focus especially on verses 9 and 10 when you go home. If you're unsure about salvation, I'll tell you how to do it. For it says, if you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you confess with your mouth, you shall, not might, not maybe, not next Sunday, but you shall be saved. And salvation is what God wants for his people. He wants you to be saved because he loves you. So you read that, you pray about it, and you can have salvation. And I'll wait for you to come and tell me, Pastor, I received Jesus into my heart, and now I'm saved. And I'll wait for you to come, and I'll present you before the people as a new creature because of conception that took place in your heart. Amen. May we stand together to sing our doxology. Praise God, from whom all blessings.
And now, unto him who is able to keep you from falling, unto him who can present you before his presence without fault and with exceeding great joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. Let us stand together to sing the grace. Again, we welcome our visitors, especially our special guests from Southern University's alumni chapter. May God bless you. God bless you all. You may go in peace.